So this video is going to be about voltage boosting your fuel pump. So there's lots of opinions out there, experience. A couple companies swear by them, give you all kinds of crazy data of why they're perfect. And they don't cause any negative side effects. Stuff like that. So i um, got my full test bench here set up for testing pumps and stuff. So I uh, figured for my first intro vid using it, we will do a voltage booster test and see what kind of difference we get as far as flow and current draw and heat the pump creates and all that stuff. So uh, in there, stock 05 to 10 Mustang fuel pump assembly, stock pump, all right? So in there. And uh, we're going to run it and start looking at some numbers. All right. Um, so the first test I want to do is gonna, we're going to go 13 and a half volts. That's the standard automotive voltage for, for accessories, including testing fuel pumps, right? So, so what we got here? So at 13.5 volts, we we're pulling 12 amps current. So, we have 12. All right, and that's at 40 PSI. And nothing is registering on my flow meter. So the minimum reading of this meter is one gallon per minute. So a gallon per minute is roughly 227 liters per hour. So it's not gonna read at this lower voltage um, the advertised flow rate of the pump is 180 liters per hour at, you know, factory voltage. So now I'm going to dial it up, simulate a voltage booster. So your standard voltage booster is typically called an 18 volt. Um, they actually usually put out around 17 and a half volts. So that's what we're going to do the test at. So let's dial it up. Ah, uh, look, the flow meter's working. Yeah, so I mean, that's how you know, right? So down, even around 14.8 volts, which would be a really healthy alternator, uh, the pump is still flowing under two, 227 liters per hour because it won't register until it hits that mark. So there, it starts reading. So anyway, let's go up to 17.5. There we go. Let that stabilize for a few seconds. Looks like we're bouncing around. Yeah, pretty solid at 1.3. Ticking up to one. Yeah, let's call that 1.3. So, flow, it wouldn't register. I'm gonna put the factory reading of 180 liters per hour. And then, uh, let's see. Amperage for the new voltage level. I'm jumping around a little bit, let that steady out. I'm gonna call that 15 and a half, I think is fair. Maybe a little more. Let's just call it 15.5, okay? About 15.5 amps of current. So we had 12 amps before. Okay, and flow, 1.3 gallons per minute. So, We'll convert that in a second to liters per hour, which is what y'all are typically used to seeing. And again, that's at 40 PSI. So that's the flow you would be getting um, with a voltage booster, you know, at, at, on the returnless system, 100% duty cycle. You would be around, put my cover over here so it's not as loud. Um, that's the flow you would get. Now as a little bonus thing, just so you can see, um, so let's say you're running 10 pounds of boost, right? So this is a delta pressure that the PCM is maintaining. So if you put 10 pounds of pressure in the manifold, it's going to raise delta pressure 10 pounds. All right. So realistically, that's about the volt, or excuse me, the pressure we're going to be at. If you're stock block, you know, I'm. You know, I have a stock engine. I put a, a power adder on there. I'm gonna run 10 pounds of boost. That's a pretty nominal place to test. So as you can see, you actually pull a little more current. So that'll be our little bonus thing. 
So we pulled 16.1 amps at 50 psi, and flow is about this uh, a little less. So it's dropping. So before it was 1.4 to 1.3. Now it's dropping down to 1.2. So let's say flow is 1.2. Because as the pressure of the pump outlet goes up, um, flow goes down. So that's how it works. All right, I'm going to shut everything off. Put this in the stand here. So I'm going to hold it. Make sure you all get a good view. I think that'll work. Okay. So, yes, I have a pink calculator. Don't hate um it's a navy thing right so on the ship people take your stuff so you always get stuff that's pink so then one deters them from taking your stuff on the boat two if they do take it it's easy to find it because hey that's my pink lighter or my pink pen or my pink calculator anyway all right so let's do some math here to get so yeah i gotta convert so like i said earlier um we got to convert that to liters per hour. That's what everyone's used to seeing. So 1.3 times 227.125 gives me 295.2. Let's just call that. That's 295 liters per hour. Okay. This is one more already. Um. And then we'll go ahead and do that other calculation for the higher pressure as a little bonus test we're doing. So 1.2 times 227.125. So that's 272 liters per hour. All right. Uh, now let's see what the, uh, the current increase was. So we went from 12 amps. It's uh, the factory circuit is six engaged wires, about 20 feet, and it's, Factory fused at 20 amps max. So we went up, what, 3.5 amps increase in current. So 3.5 is the difference divided by 12.29. So 29% difference in current. So current increased 29%. And like I said, since it didn't register flow because it's under two, you know, one gallon per minute. We're going to use the advertised flow from the factory and then the boosted flow numbers. So 295 liters per hour minus 180, 115 divided by 180.63. So flow went up 63%. All right. And then we'll do the other um, at 40 PSI, right? So as we saw over here, we're actually getting a little less flow. If you have a boosted setup and you're running higher than 40 pounds of pressure, differential pressure, which is what you need under boost for your injectors to get the right amount, amount of fuel. Um, so that's, that's a pretty good gain. I mean, I, I mean, I see the appeal of a voltage booster. You're like, oh, okay, I'm only adding four voltage, three to four volts, wiring the thing. Um, usually easier for guys to install. They don't have to go into the fuel hat. Like I get the appeal, but now let's look at some of this data a little closer. So uh, let's, let's see how much heat or watts we're generating. So voltage times current. So at 13.5 volts times 12 amps is 162 watts so that's how much heat or energy the pump is creating and then we'll do 17.5 volts times 15.5 271 watts all right about 100 watts, a little over 100 watts. I mean, that's a pretty good increase in heat. Heat's what wears fuel pumps. It's what's going to wear the motor, uh, the brushes in the, in the pump motor. So, uh, so it's give and take. Granted, on return list, you're not up at this higher voltage all the time. It's only at the upper RPMs when needed. 
Right, so in a returnless setup, a voltage booster can be a cheap way to look at it. However, if we look at the overall flow, we're getting 295 liters per hour. That, you're under where you want to be to support a 500 wheel, rear wheel horsepower EFI car. If you just look at brake specific fuel consumption and all that stuff, you're you're close to the edge. I I wouldn't want that. I mean, I think the small. I don't like to put smaller than a 400 liter per hour pump on a stock setup in there just because it gives you plenty of overhead. It allows the pump to run, you know, one of these TI Automotive style pumps. It allows the pump to run at a lower duty cycle. And I do other things like upgraded wiring to lower the current draw and heat of the pump, right? So it's a 400 liter hour pump. You might only be needing that 300-ish, 320, 350 to get you to 450, 500 horsepower. Um, but... It gives you room, so I'm not, you know, I'm not running 90 plus duty cycle, percent duty cycle, creating all this extra heat like cycles over and over my pump, right? So that's something to think about. Um, plus, you know, that pumps, I think this hat had 125,000 miles on it. So that's 10 plus years old, so, right? Fuel pumps are wear items. As the motor wears over time from heat and cycles, um, the flow does go down. The motor loses uh, strength, and you do lose flow. So, and there is hot flow loss too, just from the gasoline being hotter. But I'm not going to get into that. So that's some of the numbers. So, yeah, you're 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 pulling about 30% more current, getting about 60% more flow out of your pump on a stock pump. Not bad numbers there. Uh, let's let's look at these other numbers. Let me calculate them. So. At the increased pressure, which guys at that horsepower level on a three valve, they're running boost, right? So it fit, this was at the, our 50 PSI numbers that we, we recorded. Um, so 16 amps, 16.1 amps times 17.5 volts. A little more, a little more heat, 281 watts. Um, and then let's convert that 1.2. Oh, we already did that. So that's, you know, we lost 20, 20 liters per hour. That's not going to be, I'm not even going to calculate that. that. That just shows you that as I start raising pressure, um, you lose flow. So, yeah, there's, there's the numbers we got testing a, is that 125,000 mile, 10 plus year old stack pump? So, yeah, if you do pick up one, you know, if it's 05, it's got miles on it. Um, I probably would just recommend replacing the pump, getting a brand new pump. Pump that flows better at stock voltage with the wiring. And then you're not drawing as much heat. Your pump's going to last longer. And you don't have to worry about wearing out an older pump, if that makes sense. So, yeah, at the end of the day, it's up to you. Uh, does it work? Yeah, it, it works. Right, we we saw, you know, it's kind of almost a two to one for the increase in current draw, vice flow we got out of the pump. So it does work. Um, is it the best idea? That's up to you, right? And really, you know, if, if you get a pump and wire grade for two hundred bucks, a lot of voltage boosters are expensive today. Like, I think the cheaper BAPS. From Kenny Bell, or I want to say new, or like anywhere from 280 to 350. Some of the other companies out there have BAPs, two 18 volt BAPs that are 300, 350. So they're, they're not cheap, so you're not really saving money there. Um, so, in my opinion, of doing fuel stuff, I would just recommend a pump upgrade. But you can get away with a BAP. The thing I don't like most about it, not so much, yeah. I'm going to wear the pump quicker with more current. That's a fact. That's just how physics, that's how it works. Don't anybody tell you like, oh, it doesn't let the pump wear out faster. Like it's, that's, that's how it works. Um, I just don't like the actual flow potential. We're getting 295 liters per hour and then uh, 272 at the higher pressure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I said, I, I would want to see another 50, 100 liter per hour plus reserve. Um you don't want to run out of fuel. You don't want to peg the pump. You don't want pressure to drop, lose air fuel control, right? The name of the game is safety when it comes to fuel upgrades. So I would like to see more. So.
that's pretty much it. I'm going to be making some more of these videos. I find this stuff super, super interesting. So, uh, yeah, I've got lots of different other pumps I'm going to test. Uh, different pressures and all kinds of cool stuff. Or there's something you want to see. Um, I'm also going to start testing pumps for customers. So if you get a used hat, whether it's OEM, aftermarket, any pump, and you want to get it flow tested, uh, just hit me up. I can test it at whatever pressure you intend to run it in in the car, let you know the flow. We can compare it to the advertised factory specs, see if that pump's still good or not, or, or whatever. And like I said, different pressures, voltages, we can look at the flow and map it out and test it for you. So yeah, uh, it was fun to do. Look forward to making some more of these. All right, that's it.